Hey, happy Sabbath, everybody. Um, gonna try to use a bunch of scripture here to show what it means biblically to have faith in God and Yeshua. Um, to, and you'll see through these scriptures that it's obedience. If we truly believe in Him and we truly have faith, we will be obedient to everything he says. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna fall fo not follow any of his commands. <clears throat> because there's a lot of people out there right now that um, seem to think that it doesn't matter what we do. There's nothing we can do wrong, um, which goes against everything that the Bible teaches. Um, you'll see in these verses that not being obedient is a big deal and you'll also see that there's many times here where he says they don't believe in me they don't trust in me and when he's sp speaking those words it's due to their lack of obedience very very important being obedient isn't going to give you your salvation um, but like James says is it James um, faith yeah faith without works is dead uh, and there's a reason for that because no one can see your faith, right? So when you are obedient, you can see how much faith you have. Do you believe him when he tells you that you will be destroyed if you don't obey? I don't know. I can't, I can't tell what's in your head. Um, but when I see you obeying, you can go, oh, right, okay. This, this person believes. Same thing with our own families, with our own kids. You tell them not to do something, otherwise they're going to be punished. And you can judge if they believe you or not, by if they listen. Right? If they have no fear of what you're going to do, which many kids don't because their parents will say that they're going to do something and don't do it. I'm guilty of, this, of it. Uh, they don't have that fear that there's any consequence. That's where we're, we are today. There's no fear of consequence. I'm saved. I'm sealed. Psh, I'm good. But that's not what the Bible teaches. It's not the overwhelming theme. There's may, there's some verses that say just believe in the name and you'll be saved. Um, but you've got to put those together with the other verses that say if you love me, keep my commands. Those outside the gate are the sorcerers, the fornicators, the liars, the murderers. I mean, that's that's the commands, breaking the commands. Um, one thing we have to make sure we get right first is that sin is transgression of God's commands. That's bottom line. So no sinners in heaven means people who transgress aren't, aren't in heaven. That's not to say that we're going to stumble or I'm perfect or anybody's perfect. It's being in a repentant state as opposed to a, it doesn't matter what I do state. Um, yeah, it's a big deal. A very, very big deal. Um, I'm going to start off in Numbers uh, numbers 14. Um, I'm going to read verse 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me and how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? So he, God here is wondering why these people aren't believing him. And he's saying that because they're rejecting him. So they don't, he is taking that as and they don't believe me and what I'm going to do and all the stuff I'm going to do for them. And he's taking it as rejection. What is it that they're doing for him to say this? We can we can go up a little bit here. Uh, how far we need to go? Oh, right here, the children of Israel. Um, and all the and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, "If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or only if we had died in this wilderness." Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Now, they just got taken out of this place they were in for 400 years out of Egypt, brought through the wilderness. They had the Egyptians come after them from behind. They had nowhere to go. God gets the sea to open up on both sides so they could walk through. And... They're just like never ceasing to stop doubting what he can do for them. If he can do that, he can get you the water. He can get you the food. This is very important as well for the second exodus. We don't want to make these same mistakes. 
if we're part of that second exodus, we may get very hungry and very thirsty, but we pray to Yah for Him to satisfy us, whether it's through His Word or whether it's through food. The one thing we don't want to do is complain and say, oh, we maybe we should have made this trek. Uh, maybe we'd be better off at home. That's doubting the Father. That's being unfaithful. It's not being obedient. Being obedient would be, He said He'd take care of us. I believe Him. So as you can see here, that's th they do all these things, doubting, and that's where we get him saying, you know, how long are they not going to believe me? They're not going to believe that I can take care of them. They just wonder after wonder, and they wouldn't believe. Then we move to 2 Kings, uh, chapter 17, verse 14. Nevertheless, they would not hear, but stiffened their necks like the necks of their fathers who did not believe in the Lord their God. Now, this is referring to what we just heard in Numbers. These people here in this time are also not listening. We can go up a verse. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and Judah by all of his prophets, every seer saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statues according to all the law which I commanded your fathers in which I sent to you by my servants the prophets he's telling them to obey his commands and he says no they wouldn't hear they're just like their fathers in the wilderness who stiffened their necks they didn't believe in the Lord their God so when it says believe in me this is a very first example of it's not Yep, I believe he lived. I believe he said who he says he was. I believe he existed. No. No, no. It's everything he said. That's why Yeshua says, follow me. Do what I did. He, and what was he? He was completely obedient up until the point that he put himself up on a, on a stake to be executed for us. Completely obedient. I mean, the verse right here says it. Turn from my ways. Keep the commandments. But this is what he's asking them to do. And the next verse says, but they didn't hear it. And the end result in the way the Lord thinks is they don't believe in me. They don't believe in the Lord. Because if they believed, they would do. Full belief. Yeah, right here. They rejected his statutes and his covenants. They rejected them. So they didn't believe. It also means they didn't believe the curses that are talked about in Deuteronomy in the 30s, somewhere in the 30s, where towards the end of the book of Deuteronomy, there's the blessings and the curses. He meant that. You go and check them out. If you believe in him, you believe all the stuff he said. You know? Um, Psalms. Psalms are amazing. Um, as you read the Bible and you learn more, you learn some things about prophecy, you see stuff in all the books, go back and read the Psalms because it's, it's like all in there. It's all, it's not even hidden. It's just that, you know, at the time, if you're reading the Bible from the beginning, at the time you read Psalms, you haven't got to the other stuff yet. Um, and maybe when you read the other stuff, you remember some Psalms and you're like, wait, that was in there. But, you know, go back and read them again after you get through the entire Bible um, even after you re read some prophecy, read Revelation, come back to the Psalms. It's it's amazing what's in here. These he had given these visions and these this knowledge to these people even way back then. Um, Psalm seventy eight verse twenty two. Uh, I'm gonna go up a little bit actually. We'll we'll. It's, this is the same theme as the book of Numbers. It's expounding upon what these children of Israel did in the wilderness and on how it was considered unbelief. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that water gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give us bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? You know, questioning like he did this. It was never enough rolling with them. The doubt just kept rolling. The belief just never stuck. Wonder after wonder, they got water gushed out. Well, can he give us bread? And then you get the bread, right? And then can he give us meat? Therefore, the Lord heard this and was furious. So a fire was was a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel. Well, Jacob and Israel are, are the same. Um, 
that's a, that's another story. His name was Jacob, and then when he wrestles with God, the angel, before he goes to see his brother Esau, he gets his name changed to Israel. Um, because they did not believe in God and did not trust in his salvation. Right? They did all this because they didn't believe in God or trust his salvation that he promised them would come if they obeyed. That he would take care of them, puts them under his wings. You know, he's our shield. Do we believe that? Do we have to do we check and think back um, of times that bad situations arose? Did we really freak out? Or did we sit there and go, meh? He's got this. I mean, he's proven time and time again that he will take care of us. Uh, some people do it all the time, and it works out. I know brothers and, and sisters who don't work or haven't worked to study the Bible, and he gives them what they need to pay their bills to put food on the table. It's him. It's all him. He makes a way. People who want to keep the Sabbath aren't allowed to. They say something in a place where no one gets Saturday off, they get it off. He will make a way if we, we just put our trust in him. And it might not happen right away, but it might not be time either. It's, it's his timing, not ours. We may want things now, and we have to wait for him. If we, but we have to, our faith has to be strong. And our faith is, is measured, in a sense, by some of these things that we do not do. You know? He'll provide. We have to trust that. All right. Matthew 18, verse 6 here. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, they've, they're believing in him fully. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Hmm. Woe to the world because of offenses, the world as a whole. For offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. If your hand causes your foot to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. He's just saying it's better not to have hands and feet if that's going to solve your sin, to stay in sin. Right? And, and these little ones, they believe in him. But if you if you cause these children that believe in him to sin, and there's many out there like that are doing this, and we can literally take it where there are people who take these verses, like we just have been reading, that clearly outline that God says they don't believe in me because of their disobedience, and they will tell you it doesn't matter what you do. Yeshua paid it all. He's our Sabbath. It's clearly not okay. It's clearly not okay. Abraham was deemed righteous because he believed in what God said. When God told him he would make him a great nation and a seed, Abraham believed it. Right? But did that end there? No. Then he has a son. And he tells Abraham to go bring his son to a mountain and, and kill him and offer him for a sacrifice. And Abraham doesn't skip a beat. With his actions, he showed his faith. Right? His works, his obedience. Works is obedience. It's not literally works, like earning it. It's just being obedient. You know, if God tells you to go do something and you do it, that's not your works. That's the work. It's you doing the work of God. It's you doing the work of God. <clears throat> Mark 1 verse 15 uh, actually, verse 14 now after John was put in prison Yeshua came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God saying okay so what's the gospel of the kingdom of God he's going to tell us the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe repent and believe Re there's two things here is two. It's not just believe. I know that there's verses that say just believe in my name and have salvation. That 
that needs to be combined with the other. Everything has to reconcile. So we can't reconcile that to this unless we say that it's both. You know, and it, you know, it's it's taking everything in context. Repent from the sin. We can't live in it anymore. Realize he died on our cross to wipe away the sin. But the sin doesn't get wiped away if you don't know it was wrong. Like the law and the Torah are a mirror. We're to look in it to go, okay, this is what God expects. Well, I fall short there, there, there. Whoa, I'm, I'm nothing. Wow, I fell short everywhere. It shows you. So you know what, what is wrong in you and you go, wow, that's what you want from me. I'm not doing it. And you feel dirty inside and you pray to him and say, Lord, help me get this out of my life. I don't want it there. I don't want it there. It, I want to love what you love and hate what you hate. And Marac in, in his only way he can do it, it comes out. It might be slow. It might be fast. For me, it was one thing at a time. And it just disappeared. Something's not completely. And I reach out to him all the time. But anything that I had tried to do over the past years to get out of my life on my own without asking him, and, and really, when I think about it, not being repentant, actually seeing that it was wrong, not just that's ah, not good for me, I shouldn't do that, uh, didn't work. But right when I prayed to him and had re a repentant heart and, and cried out to turn from those ways, I had faith in him that he could do it. And he did. I believed in him. Fully. Not just that he exists. And I showed it by being obedient. I, right? I, I, read the, I read the commands. I saw what we were to do, what he hates and what he likes. And I made a... Um, I made a... What's the word I'm trying to think of? Intentional... I made an intentional change in my life to follow them. Many of all my brothers and sisters have the same story, the same story. We repented. We turned from the sin. There's not one brother or sister I have that says that they stay in it and they're, and they're saved because of the grace. It doesn't matter what they do. Luke 24, 25 then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart, to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. He's calling he, the people who are taking time to believe in what the prophets have spoken, he's calling foolish. And the prophets spoke a lot. You can go check them out. But the common theme is repent, turn from sin, come back to God, and destruction will not come to you. And they said, many times because you won't repent you will be destroyed we have to believe in all that they spoke they said a messiah would come to wipe away the sins of the world he did it does not say anywhere in the prophets that a messiah will come to wipe away the sins of the world so people can do whatever they want because once they believe they're saved it does not say that it says repent and obey repent obey repent obey Sit in ashes, gnash your teeth. You got the book of Jonah where he goes to Nineveh and he just says, you're going to be destroyed in 40 days. What does he do? What do they do? They repent. They turn from their sin and, and it's gone. They don't say, we believe in you, Lord. We believe in you. You are the one and only God. Yeah, they do that, but they repent and they stop sinning. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 1 verse 3. Oh, we started at the top. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, Berechiah, the son of Ido, the prophet, saying, The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. He's speaking to 
his fellow people in the land. Because of this, therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Don't be like your fathers to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. But they did not hear nor heed me. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, Just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to us, according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. Return. Be obedient. We have to return to him. And he, in turn, returns to us because he promised he would never break his covenant. We've broken it many times. They broke. They, it got broken shortly right after it was instituted. I just think it's uh, Exodus chapter 19 through 24. I might be off a chapter. I believe it starts on 19. It might end on 25. But 19 Exodus 19 starts with the Holy Covenant at Mount Horeb. Um, the Israelites are like 10 miles away from where Moses was. Um, my, Moses was on Mount Sinai. They were away. He, t he was there. They had to leave because they were too close to the mountain. And so they journeyed a little bit further. And that chapter 19 of Exodus starts what the covenant is. And you'll see when you get to the end, it's got all these commands, the Ten Commands. It expounds on some of the Ten Commands. Um, you know, they're not additional commands. It just, you know, shows you how to love your neighbor um, and things like that. And then when you get to the end, each covenant has to be sealed with blood, right? And he seals it with blood. He, they, they kill an animal and sprinkle sprinkle it with blood, sealing the sealing the covenant. And then it moves on, and they do the golden calf, and other things get added. Um, but this is what he wants us to do. Return to him. Trust in him. Have faith in him. They didn't believe what the prophets said. They didn't trust in God. Trust and belief. It's the same. It's in, in this sense, it's the same thing. You know, you got a prophet here telling them, "Turn from your ways or be destroyed," and they just don't do it. They didn't heed the words. That means they don't believe. There's other parts in the Bible where it says people walk around and say, "Yeah, he doesn't hear good or bad." It's like, what? Look at the stuff that's happened. He proclaims everything before it happens. So when it happens, we know it's him. And someone else can't say, oh, it's Mother Nature, climate change. Oh, it's, you know, someone prayed to Buddha. No, because he's already said it all. He already told us he's going to turn up the heat. He's already said everything, birth pains. We got streams and rivers d drying up. He told us he'd dry them up. He told it. It's all in here. We can't point to anything else but God keeping his word on what he said he would do if we stayed disobedient. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 9. Uh, we'll go up a little here. This is just where the, the meat is. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. Now, God kept that promise. He scattered the northern tribe, and they stayed scattered, assimilating into all nations of the planet. They're everywhere. And if you didn't know, if, you, if you're waking up, and you're following the commands, and you're in covenant with God. In covenant's the key. And how do you be in covenant? Read Exodus 19 through 24. You are Israel. Israel is what he named his people. It's not a land. It's not a nationality. It's the commonwealth of Israel. That's what you're grafted into. That's what Paul is speaking about when he's talking about being grafted into the olive tree. The, the commonwealth of God's people is the tree. You, We are adopted into it 
because we weren't naturally part of the tree, these people got scattered and mixed us in. And he says here, right, scatter to you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest parts of heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as my dwelling for my name. Second Exodus, when he gathers all the people who are scattered that are following his covenant. They're his people. He calls them. The sheep will hear his voice, and they won't hear the voice of false teachers. They'll only hear the true voice. Right? We have to follow the commands. Full belief. Here's another example of believing. If we believe this, if we believe in him, we believe this. Our faith that we have is shown by this believing this is going to happen. We sit here and wait for the second exodus. I mean, my brothers talk about it all the time. Right? Oh, man. We're all spread apart. It, it, this is, he, we are scattered. There's brothers and sisters in Thailand, in Mexico, in Canada, California, Florida, UK. We all talk. Look, we're right there with each other, but we're so far away. The day we all come together... Wow. Wow. John 3.36 He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. Believes in the Son. And he who does not believe the Son Right, so when you say, "Do you believe me?" Now you, you're a little. It's a little clearer that he's talking about. Do you, do you b believe in what I've been telling you? So here's believe in him, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So if you believe in the Son, you have everlasting life, and it says it right here. You can't change that. He's not saying do the works or anything. He's saying believe in the Son. I believe that you, Yeshua, paid the price to atone for all the sin, for all time, to wipe my slate clean, to give me a chance to be born again into the Holy Spirit so that I can turn from my evil ways, free of all the things I've done, and not do them again. And live a life dedicated to my Father God by obeying Him and believing in everything that they, that He said, whether directly or through Yeshua, His Son, the Messiah. It's amazing you, when you see this. Faith equals obedience. I think I wanted to click on here. I want to check out the concordance for this. I'm not, I apologize. I haven't really used this much. How would I? How would I do it? Where do I? If I just click this here, I right click it. Nope. Click it. So this, you know, he that believeth on the Son. Let's check this word out. Oh, it says it doesn't occur at all. Yeah, I clicked the wrong thing. All right. To believe, to commit unto, to commit to, <coughs> commit to one's trust, be put in trust with, be committed to one's trust, believer. So it's not just belief that he's there, right? To think to be true, to be persuaded of. I, we are to think that he existed and he is who he said he was. Of the thing believed, to credit, have confidence. Yep, if you have, you have confidence in him doing what he said he'd do, good or bad. All of it. we got to take all of it. He said that if we believe in him, 
we'll have eternal life and our sins will be clean. But he says if we don't obey, we're wiped out. The, the verse ended there by saying that the um, God will be against that person. To trust in Yeshua or God as able to aid either in obtaining or doing something. Yep. We trust that they will help us repent. Acknowledging of some fact, to entrust one thing, to be entrusted with a thing. So he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not. So this is the word for not believing. To not allow oneself to be persuaded. To refuse or withhold belief, just not believing he is who he was. And there's plenty of people who say the New Testament is false and Yeshua was never the Messiah and he was some evil guy. This is the one. To refuse belief and obedience not to comply with. Like what? It's saying right here that obedience, not being obedient, equals unbelieving believe not you know if 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 you if yeah if god yah father abba yah however you want to say it tells you not to mix pagan worship with his worship and you go out and you do christmas and you do easter and you do i mean the one that's got no backing halloween you are you believe not the father you don't have the belief that he's looking for. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. And you'd believe him on what he says happens when you mix. And you'd read the Bible and see what happens. He doesn't just tell you. We see what happens. When they made the golden calf to worship God, when Moses was up there for 40 days, and they thought he was gone, and like, we, you know, they say we're going to worship the God who took us out of Egypt. It's not some strange God. That was not a stranger. They knew who took them out of Egypt. They made the golden calf, and God didn't say, oh, uh, I said no graven images, but man, they're really worshiping me hard and thanking me for what I did. No. He says, Moses, get down there. I'm killing everybody. They're done. <laughs> they don't believe me. They don't believe in me. If they did, they'd not do that because they'd have fear of being destroyed. I have the fear of being destroyed. My brothers and sisters have the fear of being destroyed. When you say, I am saved by grace, nothing I do matters, you don't have the fear. You're not complying with. You fit these definitions. You're not allowing yourself to be persuaded. You refuse and withhold belief. You are an unbeliever. Claiming he exists isn't belief. Like, this is huge. It's just huge. It defines belief right there. He, he said, I'm going to go back. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. He who has unbelief does not believe, does not comply with what the Son said, does not comply with what the Father said. You won't see life. You won't see it. Even if you believe he is who he said he was, if you don't comply, you don't get in covenant, you're not going to see it. You're going to see the wrath. This is scripture. This isn't me. The, f the definitions showed me this. I didn't come up with this on my own. Praise Yah that I clicked on this to see the difference between these two words. Romans 2, chapter 2, verse 4, uh, verse, uh, I would do Romans chapter 2, verse 2. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same thing? that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, 
forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. His grace leads us to repentance. And because they don't know this and they don't repent, they harden their heart. And their heart is imp impotent. They're treasuring up wrath in the day of judgment. Oh, and look at our works don't matter. Ours don't. But being obedient to God, which is what God calls works, that's his works, who will God will render to each one according to his deeds. Let no one tell you what you do doesn't matter. He's going to render righteous judgment based on the deeds because they are a measure of our faith. They, we're going to all meet with him singly. We're only going to be able to attest for our own actions. No one else is going to be in the room with us. You're not going to be able to point a finger and say, Pastor Bob said I didn't have to keep the Sabbath. Um, because what's what what do you think you're going to get for a response? You read my you read my word over and over. You saw what I did to people who didn't obey. You saw that I said that the sab remember the Sabbath day. I put it as a fourth commandment. I wrote it on stone with my own finger and had Moses seal it in the ark of the covenant. It's still there. I said I'd never break it. I told you what would happen to people who disobeyed. Why would you listen to Pastor Bob? <coughs> We have to have faith and believe in him fully, everything he said and did. That's what the Bible is teaching us. We're going Old Testament, New Testament, everywhere. It's everywhere. Isaiah 65. I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good according to their own thoughts. A people who provoke me to anger continually to my face, who sacrifice in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend the night in tombs, who eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels. Yikes. Did it say who eats one? Why, why? So we're talking about people who provoke him to anger, right? Burn incense and altars of bricks. They do it to his face. And he's in, these people are being described as those who eat swine flesh and the broth of abominable things. And I've, I'm willing to bet when you look this up, it's that broth is broth made from these pigs and other animals that were not supposed to, that were never considered food and blood as well. Because a lot of pagans, when he said don't eat the blood, when you go to look, they would they would boil the animal in its own blood. They would reuse the blood to make gravies and stews. They'd pour it right in a cup and drink it with their meal. You know? They're just rebellious people. They didn't believe. They walk in a way that is not good. Walk in a way. That is like our walk, right, is not like our walk it's what path are you on are you on the path he set before us the narrow path ten commandments narrow path and it's saying they're walking away that's not good disobedience to what he said is not good um, 1 Peter verses 4 through 17 for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God and it if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? So all the believers, all the people who confess his name, all the people who believe in him are getting judged first. We are supposed to be obeying the gospel of God, which we read that Yeshua came to preach the gospel and it was repent and believe. All right, repent from sin and believe everything God said. What's going to be to those who don't obey? Like, we're getting judged first. We're not all going to where we want to be going. He judges his own first. Because many of his own claim to be his own, stamp, you know, name it and claim it. They're not obedient. Yeah, not 
obeying the gospel of God and he's a righteous judge so all who don't obey are going to get the same fate now it might not be the same level we do learn in the Bible in places that are you know he has mercy he gives mercy as as much mercy as we've given so you know an example of what it seems to say there is uh, you might have in the book of life or the books he has a thousand offenses against you but if you if you had mercy a thousand times it wipes it clean it offsets and he never looks like okay you 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 know um, <clears throat> right if the righteous one is scarcely saved where will the ungodly and the sinner appear and right as I started this, I defi we defined what a sinner is. They're transgressors of the law, transgressors of the commandments. They're not in covenant. This isn't, I stumbled here and there and then repented person. This is, ah, I'm good. I know what I'm not supposed to do, but I'm fine. I'm doing it. It's living in sin. You've got no guilt. You've got no repentance. You don't even know you're doing wrong. Or you do, but you don't think you are. Uh, either way, it's not good. Hebrews verse three, uh, chapter three, verse eighteen. Uh, now, uh, let's go up to a little bit. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Yeah, they all rebelled. The whole congregation sat there and worshipped the golden calf, and had the party. <laughs> yep, all of them. They heard, they heard what to do, what not to do. They didn't have faith. They didn't believe. Now, with whom was he angry? Forty years. Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? Transgressed. He was angry with the ones who transgressed and didn't obey. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey, those who did not have faith? Those who did not have faith. I believe this is the same word that we saw in the John verse. I'll click this. Yep. They refuse belief and obedience. Wow. Belief and obedience belief and obedience show me your belief and I will show you my belief by my obedience that's really what he was saying <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11 verse 31 by faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe what wait by faith. What faith? Well, Rahab knew that the God of Israel was the only living God and he could do anything. She had heard what had happened with the Israelites, like everyone else in the town. She had faith. She believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So she didn't perish. Because she knew he he could just wipe them all out like this. So she received the spies with peace and she was saved. She showed her faith by her obedience. One Peter chapter three verse twenty. And we'll go up to eighteen. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. He died to bring us close. <coughs> God can't be near sin. He wiped away our sins so we could be brought close. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Right? So Yeshua went down for the three days and preached to the spirits in the prison, who formerly were disobedient. Disobedience is the same word, unbelief formerly had unbelief when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few that is eight souls were saved through water they didn't believe 
that God was going to flood the earth. They didn't have faith in him. Whatever reason it was, he, they showed that they didn't have faith by the being disobedient. We looked at the definition of this word a couple times. It's both, believe and obey. Had they believed in him, had they had faith, they would have, they would have followed Noah. Tons of examples here. It just keeps going, showing you it's faith and obedience. <laughs> Titus, 1, 6, uh, Titus 1, verse 16, They profess to know God, but in works they deny him. They profess to have faith. They profess to say who he is, but with their disobedience, they deny him being ab abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. Man, do you want to be disqualified for your salvation because of your obe disobedience? I mean, this is a really great verse to say what we do matters. Someone running around saying what we do doesn't matter. We can't earn our own salvation. No, we can't. Why? Because we can't do enough to atone for our own sins. The only way to salvation is trust in Yeshua, and he wipes us clean. He gives us the new slate. There's no salvation without getting your slate wiped clean and being born again. That's it. But our disobedience, once we come to that knowledge, if we don't be obedient, we're disqualified. We don't get in covenant with him. We're not his. How's he going to know if we're on his team, if we're part of his people? What's going to set us apart? Even the demons knew who he was. They all, they've, they've seen him. They know who he is. What sets you apart from the demons is your obedience to him. Your fear of what he said will happen. Two Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Lawlessness. It's at work. It's at work. It's a mystery to me why when we have all these verses, we have to reconcile everything. So when I'm shown verses by people that just that says, confess his name and you're saved, I think of all this stuff we've just gone over. I'm like, well, how does all this fit? And it all fits when we looked at that definition of believe the son, what he said. And we look at that and it says obedience, belief and obedience, obey. It's, we, we can't, we can't throw, throw the stuff out. It's here. Mm -hmm. We have to restrain. We have to restrain from lawlessness until... Satan is bound up and destroyed, which we see in Revelation. This is the last one here. Where is it? All right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the work of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. I didn't even have this one highlighted, but man, why? They're getting deceived because they didn't receive the truth. They didn't, they weren't a Berean. They didn't reconcile all the verses. They, they thought we were saved by grace and our works didn't matter and our obedience didn't matter. Man, I, man, receive the love of the truth, please, everybody. Receive it. Look into it. Even if you see the grace, the grace, the grace, look at these verses. Look into it. Ask yourself, why are there so many verses that talk about obedience? Pray to Him. Pray, for, pray, to, pray to Yah. Pray to God for you to hear His voice. Let Him tell you. Don't let, let, you know, let this, this is, was put on me to do this, to hopefully show people these verses that they can't throw away, to have their heart pricked, to turn to Yah. Same thing that happened to me. We pass it on. We pass on His works. He did it to me, I pass it on to everybody else. It's not, you're wrong, You. I'm not trying to be like, 
look, look what I know and look what you don't know. No, no. Bring, I want to, we want to bring them all in. God says he wants, wishes none to perish. I just want to be a, I don't want to be a wicked servant and sit on this stuff. I can't make you see it. Only Yah can. you got to have a heart for him. He'll let you see it. We just went through so many verses that are about faithfulness being obedient. They didn't receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. And brothers and sisters, this is why sometimes it's like talking to a wall. They're, they're, he's given them up to the delusion, the strong delusion. Man. And they believe it. And they're hook, line, and sinker. They believe it. That they may all be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Pleasure in unrighteousness. And unfortunately, I see this, and it, you know, I, I can be going back and forth with people trying to share the truth, putting these scriptures out, hoping they're going to see. But when I, when, you know, you start talking about things, and people are like, yes, we must obey. When we repent, we come to God, we want to obey he his spirit lives in us and convicts us to keep the commands it's like yes yes and then you ask do you keep the sabbath and boof all of a sudden it's out the window no we don't have to do that jesus is the sabbath it's just it's all I, I, it's the weirdest thing it just everything goes south and then all of a sudden that turns into oh okay i understand where you're coming from just want to let you know i'm going to go have my burger with bacon it's like wow you are taking pleasure in your unrighteousness you're not throwing that in my face. You eating your bacon is not, it's its grieving me to see you do it, especially the people who I can tell aren't just faking this. They, they do want to follow God, but they've been given up to the strong delusion that they believe the lie and they won't hear. They won't hear it. They've hardened their hearts already and they won't hear it. It's not funny. It's it's not. You know, he gave us food and, and dietary laws to keep us safe. If we can't listen to that, if we don't believe him and what's going to make us sick and what's not going to make us sick. How do you think he thinks about that? Put it in your life, you know, um. If you tell your kids not to stay up too late at night, teenage kids, right? Younger kids. Younger kids, you kind of control a little more. <laughs> but you get some teenage kids and you're like, don't stay up too late. You need your sleep. You're going to wake up too late. You're going to be a zombie and this and that. And it's does it really affect you? No, it doesn't. It doesn't change how much you love them. But when they don't do it, how does that make you feel? Like, wow, they can't. They're not listening to that. And that's for their own good. That's not for my good. That's for their own good. And they won't listen to that. Like the rest? Pff. What's the big deal? We don't even... Tr many, many of us don't even trust him on what he said was good and bad for us. We can't even get past that to get to the covenant. Um, you know, I hope this blesses you. Uh, I hope having the scripture up here helps you. Um, it helped me uh, read it all. This all came about on Sabbath a couple weeks ago. Um, I was in a Sabbath space with my brothers, and we this, this came up, and man, he just downloaded all this stuff to me. And I just started getting verses and compiling them because I could just see so clear that faith is obedience. And uh, so I could see so many people weren't seeing it. And um, I'm just being an obedient servant by sharing this all. I pray that even if one person just even just gets you to look to that much closer to the Father and what He truly wants. I pray you all have a blessed
Sabbath. If you're watching this afterwards, have a blessed day. Um, peace be with y'all. Praise Yah.